the food was giving me so much energy. From one day to four days later, I was like a totally different person. My anxiety went away, I got good sleep, I woke up early, and I lost 10 pounds without starving, without measuring. The amount of food you need to survive and to be healthy is a lot more than what I was eating. I think at one point I was probably eating under 300 calories a day. Going too fast makes you go slower, and then your entire world opens up because what you thought was just your destiny, and suddenly it's not anymore and it was just that easy. Today's video is two different approaches on how to start carnivore. My name's Lily. Today we've got Lauren Hughes. Both of us are health coaches who have been eating an animal-based diet for the last few years. Though initially when we first started carnivore we actually approached it differently and yet we both have lost weight, killed our sugar cravings, increased our energy and so hopefully with our two different experiences and different approaches on how to start carnivore you can find more clarity on what would help you be most successful all right lauren it can be a little bit overwhelming when first trying to learn about carnivore because you know online one person will say you can't have dairy but butter's okay no seasonings okay coffee no bacon have some honey and it can just be a little bit confusing because you want to make sure initially you don't do the carnivore diet wrong, but you don't know who to listen to and know what's right. I guess, how would you suggest someone first starting carnivore? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on first and foremost. Really appreciate this. And it's a really good question because it's so confusing with all the <laughs> conversation out there. Um, what I've seen be really successful for people is starting out 100% with just meat. So like bacon, there's some controversy around bacon, but I love bacon, um, bacon and eggs. And then I would say ground beef, 80, 20, and maybe some steaks like ribeye steaks and just starting there. And the reason, and when I'm saying starting out, I mean, for like a couple weeks to get going. The reason I say that is because it can be more complex. I'm not saying don't have chicken. So yes, if you can cook and you know how to cook, sure. Add chicken, salmon, um, you can have shrimp, basically anything under the sun that's meat. But like those four are so easy. It takes very minimal skill level to make them and they taste good and they're filling. So that's kind of where I would start. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I say when starting carnivore, have whatever animal foods you can tolerate. But I think even that is too vague and it, it gives people too many options. Whereas with your four foods advice, ground beef, steak, eggs, bacon, that is just a great place for people to just jump into it and start. And then later, if they wanna try adding in dairy or liver or other things, then okay. But um, starting super basic can give faster clues as to which foods our body tolerates best. All right, now, when I first did a strict carnivore diet, I actually went from a standard American diet to having less carbs, low carb, keto to carnivore. So I kind of tiptoed my way into it and slowly transitioned. Whereas some people, they just rip it off like a bandaid and jump into it overnight. Um, I had to do what was called a bridge food. So instead of having dessert to no dessert, I had to bridge that habit, replace that habit with something else. Is that something that you recommend? Do you recommend easing into carnivore or going cold turkey? That's another good question. Yeah, I think so. You know, what I try to do is say, let's let's just start 100%. You just got to go and commit and be okay with the fact that if you're not perfect, you just got to get right back on the next day. To me, actually going cold turkey was easier because I wasn't still craving sugar and the processed foods. But, you know, if you're somebody else who tried that approach, then I would say, yeah, let's do a bridge, you know, uh, something that would bridge it. For a lot of people, I think that's fruit. Sometimes raw dairy is okay, like raw milk. Cheese is a good one. But again, all of this, it's kind of like risky business because sometimes people go in on that and they go and they binge on it. Just start with those basic four, three or four things, I would say. Okay. And I'm always curious for those of you who jump into carnivore overnight, did you eat intuitively or track your calories. Also, was that kind of like a temporarily painful experience? Because, you know, like I said, I baby stepped my way into it. So I never experienced keto flu or, you know, like diarrhea month or low energy. Did you have any crazy changes with like going to the bathroom or 
any keto flu-like symptoms? Yeah, I, I did carnivore completely. So I did the cold turkey, 100% carnivore. I didn't touch sugar at all, not even a little bit, because I really wanted to see what was going to happen. And I, for the first time, and this is why it was so profound to me, actually, is because for the first time in my life, I didn't measure and I didn't try very hard for the first time ever. And I lost 10 pounds without starving, without measuring. When I did just the switch, it was literally like one day I found it a couple of years ago. And then I was like, click, okay, I'm going to try it. And it was like from one day to maybe four days later, I was like a totally different person. And it was immediate. I noticed bloating was basically immediately gone. And that was a huge thing for me. So with bowel movements, nothing major happened at all when I just cold turkeyed it. And bloating went away immediately. But then fast forward those four days, energy was sky high. And I was waking up at six in the morning, just kind of like alive, I guess. As far as the kind of the, the keto flu that they talk about, you know, I think I had one and a half days of like, Ugh, I feel kind of fuzzy. But when I gave up coffee, which was a while ago too, that was way worse. So like if anybody's ever given up coffee, that's way harder than just for me, at least than giving up the other things because the food was giving me so much energy. I, when I started doing carnivore, I didn't actually have coffee in there, but I removed coffee before that for three months as well. And that was terrible. Wanted to see what I was like, and it didn't really negatively affect me to have it in my life. So for me, I continue to have it. It's not quote unquote carnivore, but I also feel like I took it out and I know how my body reacts to it and it works for me. It's fine. Yeah, I'm not a coffee drinker. I just, I don't like the taste, but I do find most people can tolerate coffee um, or even feel better with the coffee in, in the diet. Technically, like you said, not carnivore, but there's so many labels nowadays, like meat-based, primal, ketovore, animal-based. And um, I try to demonstrate and teach, like, let's focus less on the label and more about how you feel. Um, so, though when people first start carnivore, some people are nervous about either diarrhea or constipation. With constipation, I would say have more fat because the fat can help it slide on out, more electrolytes, more water, or if someone's having a lot of cheese, dairy can constipate, so I would say have less cheese. For someone who has the opposite effect and has diarrhea, what would you suggest? You know, doing the opposite? Yeah, do the opposite and also take out coffee. <laughs> I don't know if you have ever heard this, but like a lot of people will drink coffee so that they can go to the bathroom. So maybe cutting back on the coffee is actually something that could be useful if you did have diarrhea. Cutting back on the fat, also cutting back on the electrolytes. Don't do no electrolytes, but just cut back a bit. What are your thoughts about fasting? When you first started carnivore, did you try intermittent fasting or is fasting something you recommend with your clients? When I started out, I did not start fasting. Um, it kind of naturally occurred for me. So I don't think people should fast intentionally in the beginning when they're starting this out, maybe for like the first couple of weeks, because we all need to relearn what our bodies are trying to tell us, which is when we're hungry and full. And if we give it some time to adapt over a couple of weeks, even like that quick, two, three weeks, your body starts to learn and you're not that hungry. And so you just naturally begin to fast without forcing it. And I think that's huge because if you force it, you get sugar cravings, you aren't eating enough food, you're obsessing over it and it's back to the old ways. Going too fast makes you go slower. Like if you're trying to push a good relationship with people, it's going to force it and make it weird. But if, if you go slow with it and stick the course, then you move faster. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like that with this, where it's like, I think people rush into things a bit too quickly and we will maybe get too fasting at some point. Then we end up losing weight as a result. And it's, and it's more natural than forcing it. Definitely. I find when people just remove processed foods, because the processed foods they just don't really fill you up and they're easy to be snacked on. And then by just switching to eating real nutrient rich foods, people naturally are more full, eat less often, and they don't snack as frequently. And so when people are first starting carnivore, I say, let's not overcomplicate things. Don't worry about fasting. Don't think about having liver. Uh, don't track macros and just eat whenever your body's asking for meat. But then after maybe 30 days or a couple months, if someone then wants to fine tune what they're doing, 
maybe reach their goals faster, then I would look at meal frequency and their macros because I find just a lot of people tend to under eat. And so yeah, I guess, how did you know when you first started that you were eating enough? Did you ever track your macros? Actually, do you think that calories matter? Yeah, that's such a good question. It took me learning from somebody else who at the time I was not a coach at the time I did not have the information I do now and somebody else had to kind of like model it for me. I started out under eating because I was counting calories like I used to. It was like the old paradigm of just like count calories, only have, you know, 300 for this meal and then X amount for this meal. And it wasn't until that person who was kind of modeling it for me was like, no, eat more. You're not eating enough. I do think calories matter in general, because if we eat too many calories consistently day over day, and we're not burning enough, let's say, then over time, your body composition will likely be a bit bigger, right? You're just going to be, there's going to be more mass, even if it's a lot of meat. I have seen that for myself. Um, but do I think that it is that simple to measure like one calorie in one calorie out? I don't think so because humans made up the word calorie, right? So it's a measure of energy. There's all different types of energies. The energy that we get from ground beef is going to be very, very different than the energy that we get from like a cheese puff, you know, and you can feel it too. You can feel the difference when you eat it over time. Calories are burned differently based off of the quality of food that you're taking in, the health of your body, how much inflammation you have, your insulin levels, um, your amount of stress, so many different things. So it's almost like impossible to measure calories in, calories out, because it's so specific to each person. We overemphasize the calories and we're not overemphasizing where they're coming from. Not to mention getting seed oils out of the picture. That's a huge thing because it does make you hungrier. So while I think calories matter, you don't want to binge on food. It's very hard to do on meat. I think that's why people say you don't need to count calories on carnivore because it's very hard to binge on just meat. It's disgusting at a certain point. Eat until you're full. That will do it. I do genuinely think that the ultimate goal for this is to stop measuring and start actually living. That's how I see it is like, let's stop measuring. I don't see any other animal out there ever in existence measuring anything ever. So why are we? You know, I don't think it needs to be as complicated as we make it. I 100% agree. Like you said, everything has energy. And so it's the kind of energy that we put in that matters more than the calories. It's um, the quality of the food, the amount of nutrients we're getting out of the food that matter more than the calories. So if I were to have 2000 calories of chips versus 2000 calories of steak every day for 30 days, by the end of the month, I'm going to look different. However, like you also said, if I were to have the 2000 calories of steak and then 12,000 calories of steak every day, I'm just eating more, I'm going to have more mass. But again, it is very hard to eat 12,000 calories of steak or overeat meat. I personally don't track my macros, though when I first started carnivore, I did under eat just naturally. And so once I, figured out, okay, how much do I need to have on my plate? Then I could make sure that I was eating enough. And I think that's where tracking macros, even for just a day, can be a helpful tool for people just to make sure that they're not doing their health a disservice by not providing their body with enough fuel. Okay, I kind of want to shift gears and do a little comparison of what we eat just to give people a snapshot of our similarities and differences with our meals. So Lauren, what's your age, height, and weight? So I'm 5'8", I'm about 145 to 150 pounds, and I'm 30 years old. I figured you were taller than me. You know, I'm five foot, two inches tall, about 110-ish pounds, and I'm 27. And then do you have a set amount of meals you eat in a day, or do you just eat when you're hungry? I typically have about two meals a day. And that's usually starting around noon is when I eat my first meal. So noon and then usually around 630, I would say, or seven, I have dinner. I used to do a very similar approach where I would skip breakfast and then just do my two meals in a day. Um, save my time cooking and cleaning. I love that. But um, like I said, when I first started carnivore, I was under eating. And so I found when I had my two meals and I would just add more food to those two meals, I was so full that 
it kind of hurt my digestion and I didn't feel as good. So I found if I split up my meals into smaller, more frequent meals, then I was able to eat more food and not feel like totally stuffed. Uh, and I do five meal, I don't know if we're calling like drinking milk a meal, but I eat five times in a day, a glass of milk at seven, glass of milk at nine, a meat meal at 12, a meat meal at around five or six. And then my fifth time I eat is around seven and I'll have some yogurt and a piece of fruit. Um, do you ever have dairy? I mainly keep it at raw milk. That's pretty much where I go. Yeah. Um, and then cheese, it's like a little bit of cheese here and there. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with having it all the time. If you want to, if you can handle that. Just, I don't know. It's just like something I've always done is just kept it kind of here and there. So really not that much. And I don't eat yogurt. I just butter. never really loved it. What about butter? I do love butter. Uh, yes, I do have butter, but again, it's again, it's like one of those things where I only have it every couple of weeks. I just do better without a ton of butter for some reason. It just kind of hurts my stomach a little bit. Well, what, what do your two meals look like then? I'm sure it changes every day. I know I, I don't eat the same thing every single day, but I do love my routines and definitely have the same certain foods every day. Uh, yeah. What do your two meals look like? Are they, do you have eggs, do you have fish or just red meat? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a habit eater, so I'm cool with yeah. eating like the same things. It's so easy for me. Like I've always been that way. Always. Even with the standard American diet, I just ate the same things. Um, so I would say literally every single day I have bacon and eggs. I have no sugar in my bacon. It does exist. You have to look for it. And then eggs. So I'll have like four bacon strips, four eggs. I do add pepper and I do have salt for dinner. It's either like a ribeye steak or it's ground beef. And then here's the other thing. I get a little bit of a mix up with my week because really lucky the job that I work at, they offer food there. It's amazing. They offer salmon. There's like shrimp chicken, pork tenderloin, if you want, it's like an entire charcuterie board. If you want to have that, I get a lot of variety in those days that I'm there as well. So I do love fish. I don't cook it all the time. I'm a little bit hesitant with bigger fish because of the mercury that's in there these days. I don't think it's terrible, but I'm just a little bit cognizant of it. You know, what about supplements? I'm here in Missouri. So I do supplement with vitamin D in the winter and then I take electrolytes. What about you? No, I don't personally supplement with anything other than electrolytes because I run long distance. So I don't do it for like a sport or anything. You know, well, I do, but I don't necessarily compete, but I just do it as a hobby. So I need to get electrolytes because you're sweating and it's sunny and all that sort of stuff. Outside of that, no, I don't really do anything. I do make sure to get sun every single day, though. If you're looking for a clean ingredient brand for electrolytes, I recommend a company called Element. They'll actually send you a free sample pack with your order. And the sample pack comes with eight individual packages of all their different flavors. Element doesn't have any sugar or artificial ingredients. I just pour the package into my water and milk each day, and it gives me more sodium, magnesium, and potassium, which helps me stay hydrated and has helped with my eye twitching and muscle cramping. You can get these eight additional packages with your order by going to the link in the description or by going to the URL drinkelement.com slash Lily Kane. Do you eat organ meats? Do you have any liver? Yeah, I actually do just a little bit, just a tiny little square of beef liver a week is what I'm going for. Nice. I actually like the taste of liver. I don't have liver every day, but when we sit down and have like a meal of it, then it covers me for like a week or so. And then at this point, you and I both don't eat a strict carnivore diet. And I think that a strict carnivore diet is a great elimination diet. It's simple and minimalistic and it can help reset the gut. And if people do a strict carnivore diet and they love it and want to do it forever, awesome. But at this point, I think you do incorporate coffee. And then do you have any fruit? Yeah, so I do have coffee. And for the most part, I will say I mostly do mostly meat. 98 to 99% meat because it's just what I like. But when I do want to have fruit, I will have fruit. So that could be pineapple. It's usually like once, once a week or something like that. And it's not always once a week. Sometimes it's three times a week. Sometimes it's four times a week. Sometimes you're just having 
for cravings for some reason. Maybe it's different for girls and guys for you know for different reasons, obviously. But like, there's things that happen that in our bodies are signaling to us that we want to have a little bit more of that. You know, I'll have some pineapple here and there, or a banana, or an apple, and some grapes, maybe some berries. But you know, it's not an everyday thing for me. I know the fruit topic can be a little bit tricky to navigate because for certain people having a piece of fruit that sweet taste can then turn into having seven pieces of fruit can then turn into binge eating on cakes and cookies and so for certain people having that one piece of fruit actually does more harm than good but then for me at the end of the night having a piece of fruit just relaxes me and makes me happier for me I think not being as rigid makes me more happy and therefore more healthy as a byproduct, if that makes sense. And you said you eat 98% carnivore. Why don't you do 100% carnivore anymore? Yeah, I agree with you. I think that, well, I think there's all different types of bodies and people. And I think that to talk about this with such a broad scope of different types of people that may have different experiences can be a bit challenging because you and I are speaking about our own individual experiences. You know, from, for example, my sister, she, she feels really not good when she just has meat. There's something like missing for her. It's just like not there. We have a responsibility to then try different things out and see how we feel and not be so dogmatic in the pro in the approach a little bit and see what could be beneficial for us. But the reason I don't do that anymore is for that reason. I run a lot and I lift weights a lot. And I also don't really want to live my life without ever having a sweet thing ever again. I genuinely just like fruit. And so I think that if I can tame it and eat it sort of like the way that would be seasonal, like how our old ancestors would have, I think that's probably an okay way to approach it for, for health from what I've seen for myself. And it feels better. Okay. So what about vegetables? Do you ever have veggies? You know, I don't really, and that's mainly because I don't feel like I want them. Okay. (laughs) But like, I will say Brussels sprouts are the best flipping things ever. Love Brussels sprouts. I don't remember the last time I had them, but if I went to a restaurant and they were there, I'd probably order them, you know, sometime soon. But no, I don't crave them, nor do I desire them a lot. But yeah. Do you? Yeah, I'm the same way. I, I don't really like the taste of veggies. It's like if I can get the same vitamins and minerals that I can get from vegetables with other foods that I enjoy more, then I'm just gonna have those other foods. Um, so certain people have like gut issues or eczema or negative reactions from having vegetables. I don't, I just don't really like the taste. Um, actually, I've heard you talk about before that on carnivore, you've had less anxiety. So I was thinking it may have been from fruits or from veggies or I guess, why do you think that a carnivore diet helped alleviate your anxiety or why do you think you had more anxiety prior to carnivore? I think it was mainly because I was under eating and I was over caffeinated. I had so much coffee and I wasn't eating enough calories. And I actually never ate meat growing up. I never did because the narrative at the time when I was growing up, it's weird to say now, but like at the time it was like for guys, that's so weird to say, but that's kind of how it was, you know? And so I just, it was like salads. And then my, my social environment was very challenging. I had like a lot of stressors with the people in my life. Interpersonal relationships were causing a lot of anxiety. So Everything that was coming into my body, whether it was like the food that I was eating or the energy coming into me was stressful. It was causing me to have like a lot of anxiety basically. And it was kind of manifesting in a lot of different ways. And so when I was that way, you know, I was eating not enough, but when I, what I was eating, it was terrible. It was loaded with sugar, eating things that probably had a ton of canola oil in them and other things, palm oil. And I was over caffeinated with coffee. And it wasn't enough food. It was not enough food. The amount of food you need to survive and to be healthy is a lot more than what I was eating. I think at one point I was probably eating under 300 calories a day. That's how like low I was getting. When I found the ability to give myself permission basically to eat food, protein and fat, I found that suddenly my mood just elevated. With meat, there's certain nutrients that comes in and it lowers inflammation I stopped drinking as much caffeine. You can't relate to this because you don't have coffee, but when I'm consistent with carnivore, I can barely have coffee, barely. It's crazy. 
And so re removing all those things and then adding in the good things made my whole body just function again. I don't know. It was like my anxiety went away. I got good sleep. I woke up early and everything just kind of worked. I used to get sick multiple times a year and I had more acne and joint pain, uh, skipped a menstrual cycle. And I just had all these little things that I lived with thinking it was genetic or natural and normal. But then once I just switched what I was eating, then, um, I just think that, so I think, you, yeah, sorry. I was just saying, you have no idea what your life could be <laughs> until you try eating just real whole foods, you know what I mean? And like getting enough food and then your entire world opens up because what you thought was just your destiny is like, suddenly it's, it's not anymore. And it was just that easy. And it just changes suddenly. Exactly. Okay. So this is gonna be the last question. If you had to go back in time prior to starting carnivore, what would be the number one piece of advice you would give yourself? Because I think a lot of people are nervous. They're going to do the carnivore diet wrong. And so what advice would you give yourself back then? The number one piece of advice I would say is despite all of the noise, despite all of the guidance that everybody's giving, all of the different ways that people are going about doing it, the first thing we need to do is get rid of the processed foods for the most part. I think everybody is trying to do the same thing. All of the people who advocate for vegan or vegetarianism or carnivore or animal based or whatever the heck it is. It's like you and I talked about this. It's like, it's silly with all these names. It's like, we just are trying to be healthy and happy and feel good and be good to animals and be good to nature. And like everybody wants that, but ultimately what's causing so many issues, I think is this process of food. And if we can be real with that and get most of it out, most of it, right. You don't have to be perfect, but most of it out, then that's going to do a lot. And that's, and that's the other thing is you don't have to be perfect, right? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. If you have some sugar sometimes it's okay. But like the compounding effect it, over time, if you start now getting rid of processed foods and you don't have any for the next two weeks, and then you stumble and you have some, and then the next two weeks you don't, how much better are you going to be a year from now? If you keep that up and if you didn't change anything, it's wild. So that's what I would say. I love that. It's sometimes we just need permission to not be perfect. Um, Lauren, where can people follow you and find you on social media? If anybody wants to find me, they just literally search my name. It's Lauren Knight Hughes, a YouTube channel. You can also find me on Instagram. I believe my username is L-K-N-I-G-H-T. Also on Spotify. Again, it's just Lauren Knight Hughes.